Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to show you five features of Google Earth that teachers should know how to use. Let's go ahead and take a look here. So I'm at earth.google.com. I'm using the web version of Google Earth, and I'm signed into a Google account. And the first feature you should know how to use is right here in Voyager. Click on Voyager, and you'll see an entire section about education or education related topics. You'll find things for math, science, history, as you might expect, geography, weather, all kinds of different things around the world. Now, let's pick one of these. Let's just pick the very first one, which is about triangular structures. And this, we can explore, and we'll see there's a series of five place marks or landmarks around the world and a little bit of information. And then there's a learn more here. And we can click on that. Now opens up a new page where we can learn more about triangles. And then we can click right here and go to the next location that's in this lesson. Where again, we can click on learn more or even take a deeper dive. Now, if I want to share this with my students, I can go to the upper right corner here to more, and that will open up a share this page or share this story. If I share the page, it's just going to be what we see right now. If we share the story, it's going to be the entirety of all five of those things. And let's say we want to share it to our Google Classroom. Just click Google Classroom, or you can just copy and paste that link and share it in any other learning management system that you want to use. So let's back up and go back to Voyager, and let's look at the games that are in here. It's another great feature that you should know how to access. And let's say we want to find a quiz. Let's just do the quiz on archaeological sites. Now, you could tell students to go to Voyager and select this activity. And we can say, let's go. Or once again, you could share this story and then share it to Google Classroom or copy and paste this link and put it in any other learning management system that you like. And when students click on that link, they'll be taken directly into this quiz activity. So you don't have to tell them to navigate through. They can just click on the link and they'll be right into the quiz. Let's take a look at how a student would view that. So a student who has clicked that link that was provided will see Google Earth load in their web browser. Now, this was designed to be done in the web browser on a Windows computer, a Mac, or a Chromebook. You can try it on an iPad, although it will not work quite as well. And see, now a student can just hit Let's Go, and they're seeing the exact same thing that you shared with them. And again, we can exit back out of that and go back to Voyager. So the next thing you should know how to use is this little lucky dipping feature. Just click on I'm feeling lucky and a student will be sent to some random place in the world and they can learn more about that place. Click on more information and they can learn more about it and they can click back. But you can also add it to a project where you can create a collection of place marks. So let's click on Add to Project. We'll call it a new project. We'll give it a project title of Interesting Places I Found Today. Click Save. And that's now saved in my Google account as Interesting Places I Found Today. And I can go back in and visit this at any time. Now again, if I want to share this with my students, I can do that by just clicking the share project button. 
or we can copy the project, we can even export it as a KML file and use it in the desktop version of Google Earth as well. For the simplest, simply go ahead and invite people to look at this project. And here I'm going to change this. And I'm gonna say here, anyone can view it as long as they have the link. And again, I can copy that link and put it right in my Google Classroom or any other learning management system. So next, we're gonna take a look at this feature over here on the left-hand side, the map style. Now our map style lets us change from the default view, which is exploration, to a clean view, which will show us Earth without any borders, labels, or places, provided I turn that one off. Now we can also go and say we want everything or we want a custom look and feel. We wanna have clouds turned on or off. We can have border labels turned on or off. Let's turn those off. And we're gonna have places. Let's just do schools, government, and we'll turn off everything else. And we can go down here for landmarks. Say we just want natural features and not human structures. And there we have it. So we can do some custom views there. We can even have our clouds turned on or off or have our 3D buildings turned on or off as well. Now the last thing you should know how to use in Google Earth, let's go in and measure distances and areas. And with this, I can measure any distance that I want in Google Earth. Now I've just made that little shape and we can see it's measured the perimeter for me and the area, but that did it in kilometers. Let's say I want to have it measure in a different unit. Well, we can say meters, kilometers, nautical miles, inches, feet, miles, or smoots even. And there we have our measurement now in miles. So those are five features of Google Earth that you should know how to use as a teacher. For more details about how to use Google Earth in your classroom, including in-depth tutorials on how to make your own custom place marks, layers, and tours. I have an on-demand course that you can check out, and that's linked up right down below in the description. As always, for more tips and tricks like this, please check out freetechforteachers.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel.